The story is in Luke chapter 10 of two sisters, Mary and Martha. And the Bible just gives us a short little passage of, of five verses, Luke chapter 10 and verse 38. And it just, it just tells us that all of a sudden on a certain day, Martha was at her house. The Bible doesn't give us all the details, but it does say it was her house. It's quite possible that she was a widow. She had her own house. And uh, Martha's at her house. Mary's there. And that all of a sudden, the Bible tells us that Jesus showed up. And what the Bible doesn't tell us is the rest of the details. Jesus, he never, he never traveled alone. I mean, he had his disciples with him. He probably had a good crowd following him. So not only does Jesus show up at Martha's house, but more than likely the 12 disciples are with him. And there may even be a number of other folks that are just part of the crowd that have come to Martha's house. And you can only imagine uh, the feelings that Martha must have immediately had. Not only did Jesus show up at her house, but a large crowd of unexpected guests. Now, I don't know how that would make most of you feel, ladies. In most cases, you may not be too excited about that. Maybe there's nothing ready to serve, and maybe there's nothing ready to present, and it would have been an absolute travesty for her not to show hospitality to the guests that came to her house. And so she, like I think most people would be, was quite concerned about it, and she's in the kitchen Trying to come up with something. Now I don't know. Ladies how you are. But I know the difference between. My wife and my mother. My wife likes to know people are coming. And my mother. She'll invite you over for dinner. I've, I've had this happen multiple times. She's invited us, multiple people over. I said, what are you having, Mom? Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> Not everyone's like that. And I can imagine that Martha is actually quite cumbered about preparing for the Almighty God and his list of preachers and whatever crowd has come so she's hiding in the kitchen but I can imagine she's actually not too she's not too quiet about it when things are not going well in the kitchen you usually hear that things are not going well in the kitchen the pots is just a bit louder the doors shut not exactly on their own there's usually Notifications ringing loud and clear from kitchens that things may not be on the up and up. And I can only imagine that in Martha's case, this was the case. She's actually, she's quite upset with her sister. Although she doesn't even speak to her directly. She doesn't talk to her. Like, I, I'm, I'm thinking about it in the sense of, my brother and I, and if I had a problem with him and I didn't think he was doing enough and helping, I would just speak to him and say, you know what, you know, you got to pull up your bootstraps here and pitch in and help. But that's not what she does. She doesn't even speak to Mary about it. And what's even worse than that, Mary is doing everything against culture. You have to understand the culture of that day did not allow Mary to be in a room 
with a, 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 a whole room full of men. The second thing that the culture would not have allowed Mary to do is to be kneeling at the feet of one of those men. And so the culture is, is, is setting a, a scenario that's, I mean, Martha wouldn't be too happy about that for her sister. She's not happy that she's not helping her. Martha has become very distracted with the necessary preparations. She's so busy working for the Lord that she has no time for the Lord. And then Martha pops this powerful question. Lord, don't you care? I'm here to tell you this morning that there are people in this room that you're doing everything right. Everything's right in your mind. Everything that you've known to do. Everything that you've always done. You're just busy trying to do what's right. But can I tell you this morning that Mary did all the wrong things for the right reason. And Martha was doing all the right things for the wrong reason. Something was missing. Something was not present in Martha's life. Yeah, she's preparing She's preparing for a big group of people. She wanted the Lord to come in and, and you know, put, put his hand on her shoulder and say, you know what, Martha? You are just the best. There's a whole room, a living room full of people out in there. and You're in here just, I mean, you're going at it. I mean, it smells so good in here. And you have been working overtime, Martha. You have been really given a great effort. I'm proud of you, Martha. But he doesn't do that at all. He doesn't, he doesn't tell Martha that he's excited or proud of the things that she's been doing. She's been doing all the right things. She's trying to get a meal ready. For Jesus and his preachers and the whole group of people. We don't even know how many would have been following him that day. She's trying her best. But she says the question, don't you care? She doesn't speak to Mary. There's possibly... There's a possibility that she's dealing with issues of resentment or entitlement. Maybe there's false ex expectations that she has. Maybe she's been working to try to gain some type of favor or working as, as diligently as she can to try to outperform. She, I'm pretty confident that she didn't say all of those things, but her actions were actually showing it. And the Lord, after the, the Bible gives us this understanding of what's happening with Martha in verse 40. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. She was anxious, folks. She was troubled. She was busy. She was overwhelmed. She was, in today's day and age, she was stressed out. And she came to him and gave the question, don't you care? That I'm in there by myself and my sister has left me there by myself. And then she says a command to him. Tell her to come and help me. I need someone to give me assistance. I'm trying to Work for the Lord here. I'm trying to live for him to the best of my ability. I need someone to be an encouragement with a, a, a pat on the back. A, a little message of encouragement. God, send her to the kitchen. 
bid her come to the kitchen. Bid her come to where I am. He, she's not just saying, you know, to come in for moral support. It's more than that. It's more than, it's more than just, you know, I, I, I'd like to have some company. She's wanting, she's wanting a backup that what she's doing is right. That's what she wants. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Stop for a second and think how you think he said that. I don't think he came out and said, Martha, Martha. <laughs> no. I think he said, Martha, Martha. You can hear the compassion in his voice. And you can hear the love in his tone when he says to her, Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled. About many things. You're anxious. You're caught up with life. You've become so busy. Ah, can you hear it in his voice? As he stops her in her tracks and speaks to her with not even close to the words that she wanted to hear. Martha, you're doing a great job. Martha, you are incredible. You're like, I wish this, I wish this church had 100 people like you, Martha. That's what she thought she was going to hear. But that's not what she heard. Martha, you're so consumed with everything else. There may even be some that leave today and say, you know, Pastor, you could tell he was really tired this morning. He didn't get too excited at all. Then he goes to this powerful statement. We sang it. We just sang it. But one thing he said is needful. Only one thing, Martha, is actually important. It's not how many muffins or biscuits. Wouldn't that be good right now? Biscuits and molasses. As Jesus walks into the kitchen, maybe he can smell the biscuits. I don't think they had Crosby's molasses there, but. And the fragrances in her efforts is big. And he says, one thing, Martha, is important. Only one. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. I've come this morning. God has placed into my spirit for this day. For a whole group of people. That the Lord's just stepping into your kitchen this morning. And he's saying, Brent, Brent, calling you by name with absolute love and compassion. And saying, you know what? You've had a very busy week. 
But that's not what you need me to fix this morning. You got a lot on your plate for this upcoming week. But that's not what's important this morning. There's only one thing that's needed. Only one thing that's needful. And he's just wondering if there's a few people that would choose that part this morning. Push aside your activity and push aside your worry and push aside your discontentment and push aside your loneliness and push aside your expectation and push aside your feelings and push aside your thoughts. Push it all aside. Just for a few moments, for the one thing that is needful. God, I pray your presence would fill this place right now. Huh. What happens when you pray and God doesn't answer? What happens when you request and He doesn't give you what you request? What happens when you when you are expecting something and it doesn't take place. What happens when those things are at your forefront and, and those are the focus points that of my life. I focus easily on what God is doing or not doing. Or I, I, it's easy for me to focus on the stuff. But there's only one thing needful. And that's for me to be at his feet. At his feet. Oh, it's like this in the spiritual. I'm not saying you do this in the natural. Maybe you do. When things get tough and things are not a way you expect, you run to the kitchen and hide. It's a great place to hide in the kitchen. You don't want to talk to anyone? You run to the kitchen. You're busy. You don't want to insult anyone, don't want to hurt anyone, don't want to say anything wrong. Run to the kitchen. It's a great place to go. It's got to be that it's right. I'm busy. I'm busy doing things for God. I'm busy in life. I'm just going to I'm just going to do my little part and I'm going to go to church and and be faithful in my giving and I'm going to be faithful in my worship and I'm going to be faithful in my Bible reading. I'm going to make sure everything's all checked off at the end of the year and and all that stuff's happening and God's not responding to your entitlement. What's wrong? And our minds start to play. Must be sin in my life. Must be this, must be that. And all of a sudden, he calls your name out. That's, that's not what's the most important. The most important is falling on your face before God and being part of the one thing that is needful. And that's just to be at His presence. Oh, it, you, you're susceptible to... Other people's comments. You're in a room where you shouldn't be. You're bowing when you shouldn't be bowing. You're doing things that are against the culture. But it's the one needful thing. How many people this morning... It feels like Sunday, last week was just yesterday. And all of a sudden, oh, it's Sunday again. And the week has flown by. 
And you're looking back and it's like, oh my goodness, where did it go? Did I accomplish what I needed to accomplish? Did I actually get done what I wanted to get done? And the Bible says that we come to Jesus. We must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's the one needful part. The more and the longer I serve God, the more I realize it's not about me. It's not about my stuff. It's not about what I want. It's not about my desires. It's not about anything to do with me. It's about him. You just let his presence minister to you right now. Ah. that that's not awkward for you because if it is you haven't spent enough time with the one needful part I pray that that's not awkward for you this morning I would pray that silence and meditation and listening to his voice is not awkward for you this morning because that's the needful part we can we can sing a A nice fast song and we can all juke and jive and we can all walk out the same way we came in. Or we can have Jesus show up and we place everything else to the side. It's not time for me to be in the kitchen. Oh, I'm not worried about the floors being swept. I'm not worried about how many seats are there. and If everyone's got one. I'm not worried about all those things right now. Jesus is in the room. And all that matters is me and him right now. That's all that matters. Is for me to be in his presence. For me to bless him and him to minister to me. For me to worship and praise him. And for him to have relationship with me. That's all that matters this morning. We've got all kinds of people trying to change all kinds of people. You can't change anybody else. The only person you can change is yourself. You can't change anybody else. The only person you can change is you. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I have on my plate. That's possible. But it doesn't matter what's on your plate. Really doesn't. We're all busy. But it's the one needful thing at the top. Oh, hail the power. Of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Ring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Ring forth the royal and crown him Lord of all. Can you sing that this morning? Can you really sing those words? All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels 
prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Why don't you stand this morning? I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels sing it this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Ring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Only one thing is needful. Have you chosen the needful part this morning? Only one thing is needful today. Would you just be honest this morning? If you've had one of those weeks, you just wish God had a done this and that, and he needed to do this and that, and you wish he had done that and this. And... Gracious, we only got like three people. Okay. Yeah, we got more. You're not abnormal. You're absolutely 100% normal. If you didn't need God to do anything this week, you may be the abnormal people. And here we come on Sunday morning. And we have the choice. We can run to the kitchen. Or we can run to his feet. Both places seem like they're good places to be. But the kitchen is just being busy. And at his feet is the one needful part. Oh, God, let your mighty power and spirit, your ministering, your ministering spirit, God, move into this room right now. God, let your presence and the power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, sweep from one side of this building, Lord, to the other. Back and forth this morning. God, every individual that's come into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's not enough that we call ourselves Christian. It's not enough that we attend church. It's not enough, God, that we're trying to do our best. It's not enough. It's important this morning. That we stop and not be cumbered about with life. And to be anxious about things that are happening around us. But rather, to kneel in your very presence. I wish I could share with you this morning that you don't even have to come with expectation. You don't even have to come expecting him to do anything. You don't have to come expecting him to to take care and fix everything. You just need to come to spend time in his presence this morning. And allow his presence. Let it supersede everything else that you're thinking. Without any music this morning. 
Would you just fill this altar right now? And if it would be appropriate, if you would kneel this morning, find a place to kneel before God. If that's possible. Just kneel before Him. Put yourself at His feet this morning. Nothing profound this morning in the Word that was shared. Nothing profound maybe that you've never heard before. Nothing that seems to... Uh huh. Just let it ring from your voice, from your heart. He knows the very intent of your heart this morning. God, it's not about me. It's not about the things I need you to do. It's not about the things I need you to take care of. It's not about the healings, God, that need to take place in my life. It's not about the stuff, God, that I'm concerned about this morning. There's only one thing that matters, and that's for me to be in your presence. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. God, I want to crown you Lord of all in my life this morning. I want you to be the Lord of all. I want you to be the Lord of everything in my life. Everything, God. Everything. Everything this morning. God, I want it to be you that is focused around. I want to be at your feet. I want to be in your presence. I don't want to be caught up with this stuff. Oh, God. Let there be a cry from your people this morning, God. There's more that can happen in just a few moments in your presence. There's more that can happen in just a few moments that we could ever do in a lifetime. And, and anything else, God, it's your presence that makes the difference. It's your presence, God, that changes me. Changes me, not changes someone else. I'm not worried. At this moment, God, I'm worried about me before you. Am I right with you? God, is my priorities right with you? Is my desires right before you? Is my agenda right? with you, God.